Morning. January 16th, Tuesday, 2024. Best Baseball Player of the Year, 1984. One of my favorite players of all time, Tony Gwynn. He's in my top 10 greatest of all time. I can prove it with the stats and the potential and the career accomplishments. But for 1984, he's the best baseball player for that year. Why? Four categories he won. Batting average, 351. Most hits, 213. Singles, 177. He's got one more. Here it is. On base. 410. Four categories. Nobody else had more. Tony Armas had the home runs. Ryan Sandberg, the triples. Don Manley, the doubles. Tony Armas, most RBIs. They'll give him two. Actually, and Tony Armas had the total bases, so he had three. Tony Armas had a good year, but Tony Gwynn beats him with four. Daryl Evans, the run scored. Dale Murphy, slugging. Eddie Murray, the walks. Tim Raines, stolen bases, okay? Let's look at 1984. Anthony Tony Gwynn. Hall of Fame. What a player. I want to point out some things with Tony Gwynn. You may not realize this. I've got a lot of good things to say, but there is one flaw he had, and I'll get to it toward the end. I don't like to talk negative, negatively about any player. So I'll stick with a lot of positive things and then just kind of mention where they fell short. It's not a negative, it's a observation. Is that fair? All right, but let's look at Tony Gwynn's 1984 season. You know, he came up in 1982 as a 22-year-old. Too bad he didn't start at 20. Because he had the ability. So he missed out on two years. He was in the minors. San Diego State, I believe, he played. He should have started at age 20. You know, Ty Cobb started at 18. So he got a jump. So did Al, Al Kaline. Started at 18 years old. Tony Gwynn starts at 22. Oh, and let's, look what happened. Played in 54 games and batted 289. Why, why am I mad? Because for the next 19 years, he never went under 300 career. If that first season was 300, just 301 or 302, I don't care, just over 300. He would have had 20 consecutive years of over 300 batting. As a result, he gets 19 in a row. Tony, 289. All right, anyway, 1983 bats 309, but 1984 breaks out, plays 158 games. Miss Forgan, and he gets 213 hits. Only got 88 runs scored. A little disappointing there. And 71 RBIs. So he's not a guy that's going to score a lot and produce the RBIs and home runs. He's a guy that hits 213 hits. And he's a solid contact hitter that will not strike out that much. He had 23 strikeouts in 1984. He wins the, he wins the on base, 410. 400 or 500 on base is a really good year. Ted Williams, Babe Ruth are the guys that get 500 on base. Tony Gwynn, 410. 1984, he only hit five homers, so he's not a slugger. He's a, he's a hitter. He had 21 doubles, so mostly he's a singles hitter. So he leads the league in, in singles, 177. Tony Gwynn, if you watch the videos, 
when he swung, he made solid contact. And a lot of times the ball went through the, the hole between third and short. There's a hole right there, right? When he's a left-handed hitter, he went with the pitch and it goes right through that hole. So he's a singles hitter. And a lot of times his hits went up the middle, straight up the middle. And of course he would pull the ball and get doubles down the line. Or he would be he would be right between short and second base, right in that area. A lot of hits right up through there. Incredible hitter. Tony Gwynn, 1984, is the best baseball player. And I mentioned that he just he just goes on a tear after that. All right, listen to this. Okay. 1983, his second year, 309. Then 351. But listen to this. I'm going to go through. You got to appreciate this. 317, 329, 370, 313, 336, 309, 317, 317, 358, 394. That was the strike season, 1994. He's, going, he, he's in August. He's on a tear. He has 165 hits in August. He's on pace for over 200 hits. And he's on pace for a 400 season. Because all he has to do is go 2 for 4, 2 for 5. If he has a 1 for 4, then the next game he can go 2 for 4 and just pick it right back up and then get 3 hits in a game. He was on pace for 400. But the strike happened, and they stopped playing ball just because of money. The owners and the players, money, money, money. Terrible. 1995 comes back 368, 353, 372. So I, I want to point out something. Tony Gwynn batted over 300, 350. That's just 300. All right, he's over 300 19 seasons. But he was over 350. You know how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven times he had a batting average of over 350. We know he has eight batting titles. Superb. But seven times over 350, but listen to this. For a five year period, five years in a row, 358, 394, 368. 353, 372. Is that some kind of tear? It's not just batting 300, not just 325, not just 340. He's over 350 five years in a row, and he has seven seasons of over 350. Then 1998, he's 38 years old. Bats 321, batted 127 games. 1999, he's 39. He bats 338, but he's not playing a full season. He's up to 111 games. Here's the fall. Sorry, Tony. The year 2000, he's 40 years old. He played in 36 games. Now, I don't know what kind of injury he had going on, but 36 games out of 162? And then the following year, he's 41. He plays 71 games. But the year he had 36 games, he bats three, six, er, 323. And then the, game, the year that he plays in 71 games, he bats 324. So he has a lifetime batting average, 338. He finishes up with 3,141 hits. And that is with 9,288 at-bats. Legitimate. You have 9,000 at-bats, and you maintain 338, your Hall of Fame. And you're in the upper echelon. Like I told you, he's in my top 10. But I mentioned the flaw. The last two years of his career, 
I noticed something about Tony Gwynn. He was overweight. He didn't take care of his body weight. And as a result, those last two years, he didn't play as much. And I believe it was because he didn't take care of himself. If you look at the video of him starting off his career, I think he, he, he was about 175 pounds. And then he got to about 185 pounds. But as the years went by, Tony was a good base stealer. You know, he had 319 stolen bases. So he was in good shape. He can run. But as the years went by, his weight increased. And the last two years, I was really disappointed. If he had maintained his 175 or 185 weight, those last two years, he could have played more. And he would have ended up with more hits. I believe he would have had maybe 200 more hits. He would be in the 33, 3,400 hits. As a result, he ends up with 3,141, which is good. But he was on pace for 3,400, maybe 3,500. But he weighed too much toward the end. I think he went over 200. And you know what? When I looked at him in retirement, he was not the same Tony Gwynn. Looked like he was about 250 pounds. Now, Ken, I, I know uh, you're going you're gonna to say, Ken, why are you criticizing someone for their appearance? I'm just saying, what if, what if Tony Gwynn has only weighed 185 pounds in those last two years? What if he had played more games? You know, he didn't play as enough. He played 36 games in 2000. Was it an injury? I guess it was. But he was overweight. The one flaw with Tony Gwynn toward the end of his career, he ballooned and came too overweight. You know, he died young. He was 54 years old when he died. That's too, too early, Tony. Man, one of my favorite players. And he dies at 54. I, I guess there's something to do with chewing tobacco or whatever the health reason. I, I remember watching, I was watching a Padre game. And he was in the booth at, in his retirement. I did not recognize Tony Gwynn. Looked like he was over 250 pounds. Kind of disappointing. I guess it's hard to maintain your weight as the years go by, but I'm 69. I weigh 170. Now, at one point, I weighed about 194 pounds. I did. Because I just didn't care what I ate. I just ate, ate, ate snacks. But I told myself in retirement, I'm not going to weigh 200 pounds. I'm going to take care of myself. So I lost the pounds. I weigh 170. I feel good. 69 years old. Tony Gwynn died at 54. What was it from? I don't know. Uh, you'd have to read more about that. I, I don't want to slam Tony Gwynn. He's one of my favorites. I'm just disappointed at what happened toward the end of his career and in retirement. I'm just... You know, I saw him play. I live in the San Diego, North San Diego County area. I saw Tony Gwynn play. In fact, I'll, I, I've told the story before. I took my four kids to a baseball game, San Diego Stadium, Qualcomm Stadium, and they had photo day. So we got there early, and we're in the outfield, right field, and Tony Gwynn is in right field, too. You know what he did? He came up toward the railing. And all my four kids were right at, right at the railing. And I told my kids, turn around. And as they turned around, Tony Gwynn was right there, and my kids are right there. I took a picture. We were that close to Tony Gwynn. And I was saying, hey, Tony, way to go. I kind of said hi to him. Hall of Fame player, one of the best of all time. He's in my top ten. Why? I'll tell you why. 338 career batting average. Now listen to this. 434 strikeouts in his career. Excellent. 
you know, a lot of guys, for their career, they play 15, 18, 20 years. They have over 1,000 strikeouts, and there are a couple guys that have 2,000 strikeouts. Reggie Jackson, I think Jim Tomey has 2,000 strikeouts. Tony Gwynn, 434. Excellent. He's, he's one of those guys that's just a pure hitter. Can you imagine Tony Gwynn playing in the early 1900s against some of those teams? Let's say he's playing against Ty Cobb and Hannes Wagner and Nap Lajewai and Jesse Burkett, Willie Keeler, Billy Hamilton, all those guys. They were all career average guys. Tony Gwynn would fit right in the mix. In fact, his career batting average would probably be 350 if he had played in that era. But he played in, the, in this era. He played from 1982 to 2001, 20-year career, and bats 338 career. And it's legitimate, 9,288 at bats and only strikes out 434 times. Now, that ratio is excellent. Now, another guy that had a real good ratio for strikeouts, I'm going to put him in here, Joe DiMaggio. What am I mean by the ratio of strikeouts? Fewer strikeouts per at-bats. Did you know that Joe DiMaggio struck out 369 times in his career? But he had 6,800 at-bats, so that's 3,000 less than Tony. Tony had 434. DiMaggio 369. If DiMaggio gets another 3,000 at bats to match the same number of bats as Tony with 9,000 at bats, DiMaggio has 6,800 at bats. Tony Gwynn has 9,800. 3,000 difference. DiMaggio gets 3,000 more at bats. He probably has more strikeouts because if he had 369. Tony Gwynn, 434. It's about a difference of about, what, 70? DiMaggio would have had about 100, 100 more, maybe 150 more strikeouts. But DiMaggio, very good ratio of strikeouts per at-bats, indicating very few. You know another guy that had a really good ratio of not striking out? Ty Cobb. I'll put him in here. He struck out 680 times, but he had 11,440 at bats. So he struck out about 250 times more than Tony Gwynn, but he had about 2,000 more at bats. If Gwynn gets 2,000 more at bats, does he get up to about 680 strikeouts? Uh, I'd say close. Maybe Gwynn, 434, maybe he's in the 500s. I think Gwynn would have had a better ratio versus Cobb. Of course, the all-time leader of the ratio of strikeouts, you know who that is? Joe Sewell. Struck out 114 times in his career. But... 7,000 at bats. But his ratio is better than Gwynn's. 114 times and 7,000 at bats. Now, Gwynn, 9,800 at bats. Give Joe Sewell another 2,500 at bats. Does he get up to 434? I don't think so. He's probably in the 200s at the ratio of him not striking out as much. So, as far as leaders in striking out, the fewest. Joe Sewell is number one. 114 times in 7,000 at bats. How about one other guy I'll just mention? Ted Williams. What was his ratio? He struck out 709 times in his career, and he had 7,000 at bats. So that's more 
you know, that's that's more than DiMaggio. DiMaggio was 6,800 at bats, 369. Williams, 7,000 at bats, which is a little bit more than DiMaggio as far as at bats, 709. So, so DiMaggio, 369. Williams, 709. DiMaggio has a better ratio. Let's get back to Tony Gwynn. Why, why do I put him in my top 10 of all time? I've got 10 guys ahead of him, maybe 9 or 10. But why do I have him number 10? The 338 career batting average. You know, the, you know the order of the top 10 in batting averages, right? Ty Cobb, 366. Roger Hornsby, 358. You got Joe Jackson in there at 356. Then what happens? Ed Delante, I'll, I'll, just to be accurate, I will go to baseball reference right now and tell you the top 10. Career... Batting average leaders, what you do is you put that in and you look at the career. Okay, so Ty Cobb 366. Now you have some guys in the Negro Leagues. I'm not going to count them in the top 10 because the stats and the record keeping is not as accurate. You have to go with the major leagues. Sorry. So Cobb is 366. You have Roger Hornsby, 358. Joe Jackson, 356. Joe Jackson played in the major leagues. Got suspended for gambling. What a mistake. Just think if he had just kept playing, he may have increased his average. He's number three. You know who's number four? You got to go, it, it, it's a little hard because some guys only play 10 years and have 5,000 at bats. And some guys have 13, 15 years and have 8,000 at bats. You got to go legitimately. But you got lefty duel, 349. But you, look at, but you look at his career, he was in the majors. But it was only 11 years and it's only 1,000 games. And it's only 3,000 at bats. So a little suspect there. You got to have a lot of bats to be counted in the top ten in career batting average. But he's at three forty nine. Then you got Ed Delante, three forty six. Now he had seven thousand at bats, so that's legit. He has eighteen hundred games. Too bad he didn't get more games. And more at bats. Could he have up upped it? He may have been up to the 350, the rate he was going. So oh, Ed Delante will put him. He's number six. Cobb, Hornsby, Jackson, O'Doul. Ed Delante, five. Tris Speaker, 344. No, 345. What a hitter this guy was. And listen to this. He had 10,000 at bats. 2,000, almost 2,800 games. And he maintains 345. You got to put him as one of the greatest hitters of all time. Then you have Billy Hamilton, 344. Ted Williams, 344. These guys are legit. Hamilton... He's got 6,000 at bats, should have had more, but he's legit. Williams, 7,000 at bats. Dan Brothers, 342. He's, he was from the 1800s. Babe Ruth, 342. Luke Gehrig. Well, you got a guy named Dave Orr, but he only played eight years. Got Harry Heilman, 342. He's legitimate. He had 17 years. Willie Keeler, 19 years. 341. Bill Terry, 341. Lou Gehrig, 340. George Sussler, 340. Jesse Burkett, 338. And then you have Tony Gwynn, 
But have you noticed, of all the guys I've mentioned, who are the modern day players? Like guys after 1950. Did you notice that all the guys that I mentioned were playing before 1950? Except Ted Williams. He, well, he, he played in the 40s, right? Came up, Ted Williams, 1939, and then went through all the way through 1959. 19 years. So out of all these guys, Cobb, Hornsby, Jackson, O'Doul, Delante, Speaker, Hamilton, Brothers, Ruth, Heilman, Keeler, Terry, Garrig, and Sisler, all before 1950. What I like about Tony Gwynn, he's, he's one of the few guys after 1950 in the modern era to be in the top 20 of career batting average, and he's at 338. That's why I've got him in my top 10. How many modern day players are in the top 20 in career batting average? Tony Gwynn, and you can, I guess you can say Stan Musial, but he played in the 40s and he played into the 50s, a little bit into the 60s. So you got Williams, Musial, and Gwynn, the guys after 1950 that maintained the highest career batting average. All the other guys were in the what you could say the old school era from the 19 from the 1880s through 1950 about 70 year period there and then after that you get Nat Lajua Lai and then you get Al Simmons old school Camp Hansen Eddie Collins Paul Wayner Sam Thompson <laughs> and then you get Stan Musial at 331 Who's the next modern day player to come up? Rod Carew and Wade Boggs. Those two. Carew, 328. Boggs, 328. And after that, you got to go Hugh Duffy, Tip O'Neill, Jimmy Fox, Early Combs, Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio played in the 50s. Joe Medwick, Babe Herman. Sam Rice, Ed Roosh, Ross Youngs, Kiki Kyler, see, Chuck Klein, Mickey Cochran, Pie Trainer. Who's the next guy to come up in the modern era? Kirby Puckett, 318. Then you get Vladimir Guerrero's, 317. You get Clemente. So the modern day players didn't have the highest career batting average. All the old schoolers beat them. The ratio of old schoolers versus new schoolers as far as career batting average, it's just overwhelming. So you're asking me, why is Gwynn ahead? Or why, why is he one of my favorites? Because of that one fact. 338 career batting average in the modern era. Matching and getting up there with the old schoolers who are in the 340s, 350s. I believe Tony Gwynn could have passed 340 career batting average if he had had those last two years of not playing enough. 36 games, and then he played 71. He played 100 games in his last two years. It's a 162-game season. He should have had 100 games in each year, maybe 120 in each year, 240 more games. I think he would have passed 340 career. That's how good of a player he was. What a what a what a career too! And I like the nineteen out of twenty seasons batting over three hundred. He's the closest guy of having his whole career batting over three hundred. There are other guys that have ten years in the major leagues and they have three hundred every year. Doesn't count. Ten years is not enough. You got to be in the fifteen to eighteen to twenty years. You had twenty five years. Ty Cobb. 24-year career, 23, to 23 times over 300. Of course, some of those years, let's go back. Let's see if I can find Cobb. Yeah. 
Can I find Cobb? Yeah. I'll tell you what happened with Cobb here. It's, it's, it's an interesting scenario. This first year, 240. Of course, he only played 40 games. And he's 18 years old. But after that, 23 straight years over 300. But you can say there's a little caveat here because in 1914, only played 98 games, but he still batted over 300, 368 that year. So he missed, he missed a lot of games that year, but it's still over 300. And then in 1926, he played 79 games, got over 300. And then his last year, he played 95. You know the difference between Gwynn and Cobb? Cobb was 40 years old, played 133 games. Gwynn was 40 years old and only played 36. That's a, see, Cobb played, toward the end of his career, he, he played more. And then Cobb in his last season played 95 games. Gwynn, 71. You know what I noticed? Because I was watching TV during that time of Gwynn's last year. Gwynn didn't play the full game. He played 71 games. But a lot of times he was just pinch hitting. One at bat. In his last season, I saw that. He would just get one at bat in a lot of those games. Even though it's 71 games, he didn't play a full game. Or, or he played some full games. But a lot of the games was pinch hitting. And of course, when he pinch hit, got a base hit. Yeah. But Cobb in his last year played 95. So Cobb plays about 220 games his last two years. Cobb, or I mean Gwen, just 100 games his last two years. I don't remember Cobb being overweight, do you? I think toward the end he may have weighed more, but he, he maintained about a 185 weight. Where Gwen in his last year, he was over 200, 220. And then when I saw him on TV in the retirement, in the, in the booth, it looked like he was about 250 pounds. It's the only flaw I could mention. But I'm giving props and praise to Tony Gwynn as one of the greatest hitters of all time. We were witnessing someone who knew how to hit. What a player. So for 1984, I'm giving it to Gwynn. Will he win more Best Player of the Years? As we do the research, we'll see if he does. Thanks for watching this video. I apologize if some of you are mad at me for my critique of Gwynn's weight and his last two years. But I just mentioned it. I mentioned it in that way, indicating that what if he had better been in better playing shape those last two years? He would have got 200 more hits. He may have been up to the 3,500 hit club, and he may have been over 340 career. And that's what the potential uh, that I wanted to see. I wanted to see those last two years going out on a bang, not going out. I don't want the image of Gwyn going down. I like the image of Gwyn maintaining and surpassing and I know it's hard toward the end of your career to maintain your talent but if you take care of yourself you know your weight your BMI you should you should still perform I'll just give you an example of me and not to boast I'm 69 years old I play in a baseball league right now it's a hardball league. It's a North County baseball league. We play nine innings, wood bats, legitimate baseball. I play in a league right now. I'm 69, and there are other guys who are 70, 75 years old. They're still playing. And a lot of these guys can still hit, 
and still run the bases. Now, the pitching is not as fast, obviously, as the major leagues. But if we can perform at 69, 70 years old by maintaining our body condition, a lot of guys are in good shape. I, I steal bases. I can still see the ball and hit it. Now, the pitch is not as fast. I'll give you that. But we, at 70 years old, we're still performing. So at Gwynn, at 40 years old, should have been able to still perform at the highest level. And toward the end of his career, he kind of went down. And I'm disappointed in that. So that's my main critique. But don't get me wrong. Tony Gwynn is in my top 10 of the greatest baseball players of all time. He's in there, top 10. Where is he ranked? 9 or 10. I think there's 8, 9, or 10 guys ahead of him because of their stats and what they accomplished. All right, we're done with 1984. Thanks for watching here. 1985 is next. Talk to you later. I'm out.